All right, this is Fireman here, and today I am going to show you how you can create dynamic portals. So basically, I am able to create these two glowing orbs, which are portals, uh, with my gun. So I can create a new portal here or a new portal here. And if I try walking through them, I'm actually getting teleported to from one portal to the other portal. And these are completely dynamic, so I can just create them wherever I want to. And I can do all kinds of fun stuff with them, even like go outside of my map and then shoot and go inside again because I'm a beast. And this effect quite requires quite a lot of code, but I have all this code set up for you ready to copy and paste so you don't need to write a single line if you do not want to. But other than that, this tutorial, I think, is still pretty beginner-friendly, so feel free to try it out. Okay, let's start off with this tutorial. I'm starting off in my basic scene. I have my portal gun set up already, and now I want to be able to spawn two portals from it. And from those portals, I will be able to be teleported from one portal to the other. So. Let's go. First up, we will create the portals themselves. I'm going to use a package from the asset store called Vibrant Effects Texture Sample. Uh, it's completely free, so go ahead and get that. I'm going to, once you imported that, I'm going to go to the energy point prefab. I'm going to drag that into my scene. Then here, I want to get rid of this kind of fire looking thing. So I'm going to go unpack prefab completely so I can edit it and then delete the second layer. So I only end up with that energy point. In here, I want to go and make this particle system bigger, just because it looks a little bit small. So I have a little bit bigger kind of portal-ish looking thing. That's fine. Now I'm going to add a collider, because later on I want to be teleported once I, I collide with the portal. So I'm going to choose a circle collider. No, not circle, a sphere collider. I'm going to turn it radius down a little bit so it fits the particle system. Also I want to go into renderer. Here I want to change billboard to mesh and then the mesh itself to a sphere. And now I can already see this fits perfectly with my collider. Now that's all that I want to do for now here. So that's my first portal. I want to go ahead and rename that to portal red. And then I'm going to duplicate it and move it a little bit so I can see better. And then go and change the color to something blue. All right, I think that looks fine. I'm going to leave it like that. So I have my two portal prefabs. Now, what I want to do is I want to go to wherever my, my portal gun is. In that case, it's called Hell Whaler. I don't know what would be a reason to give the, the gun called a name called Hell Whaler, but whatever. Now, on my gun, I'm going to add a component. I'm going to add a new script. I'm going to call that Portal Portal Gun Controller. Now on that portal gun, I will have to add quite a lot of script, quite a lot of code. If you do not want to write all that code, you can find all that code on my website. It's called firemindacademy.net. You can just copy and paste it from there. I link that in the description below. But let's write that code right now. So essentially, what we want to start with is we want to set a shoot rate, so we can only shoot portals like maybe once a second. So we're going to check that later. So we are only able to shoot uh, portals every few seconds or whatsoever. Now these two variables we're going to use for the time range that we can choose. And we're going to instantiate a raycast. 
And we're also going to determine how far the raycast is going to go. So the portals cannot be spawned somewhere a million miles away. So I'm just going to set this to a thousand. Then I want to make a slot for my um, for the first portal. So I'm going to call that portal red. So here will be the place for my prefab later on. I'm going to make another one called blue. So these will reference the actual prefabs that we just made, the two portals. I also wanted to make two private ones that are kind of similar. So they are going to be the referencing the ones that I will have currently spawned in the scene. So basically these two are like the template that we're going to copy and instantiate a game object in our scene. And then these will reference the ones that are currently in our scene, so we can always keep track of them. And from here, we want to go into our update function. Now we're going to check the, the time thing, so we can only shoot in a certain time difference. We'll set that later. And then we want to check if the input mouse button is set. So this is if the left mouse button is pressed. And then we we'll also want a function for the the right one so I'm gonna set the one so I'm gonna spawn one portal with the left one and the other one with the right one so and then I'm gonna call the function shoot portal red and then I'm gonna give it the pre uh, the template of the red portal and then I'm gonna set the new timestamp so after that, I will only be able to shoot after a certain amount of time. Now this function doesn't exist yet, so it's underlined, that's fine. I'm gonna copy the same code here, but make it with blue and set this to blue as well. Now we're gonna make these two functions. So let's go outside of the update function. You can just make them a void function, doesn't matter. And then in here, we want to do a raycast. So so this basically gets a shoots a ray from wherever my camera is pointed. Now this checks if the ray actually hit something, and if it did, we're going to destroy the old portal that's in the scene, in that case the red portal. So we have the current portal that's in the scene and we're going to destroy that. That's why we kept it here. We're also going to pass a parameter here, which is going to be portal. And that portal is going to be the portal red that's coming through here. And then after we destroy it, we have to assign a new one. So we're going to assign the instantiated new portal to it. So we take the template instantiate it at the position where the raycast hit the bottom or the, the wall or whatever. And then we're gonna do a function that's gonna be called set out portals. So this function is gonna tell the portals where the player should come out when it, he goes into a certain portal. We're going to write that function later. We have to do some changes to the portals themselves first. So let's also add the shoot blue portal function. Then change this to blue as well. And this one. And that's almost everything you need to do here. Now what we want to do is we want to go to the portals themselves. Let's pick one of them. Let's pick the... Oh, by the way, I still need to rename this. Portal blue. Let's click on them. And add a new script, which I'm going to call portal controller. Now let's edit that script. By the way, this code is also available on that website. Check the description down below. You can just copy and paste it from there if you want. So you're going to give that a the out point, the other portal, essentially. And then if something collides, 
collides with the portal. And if we have at, at that moment have a um, portal reference assigned, which might not be the case if you only have like one portal, portal there yet. So you want to set that to or check if that's null. If not, we can get the object from the collision, which will usually be the player or even an enemy or a projectile, depends on your game, and get the position of it and set it to the M portal out transform position. Now this would work, however, since both of them will beam you to the other portal, you would now ending up being beamed back and forth. So we don't want that. So what we want is we actually want to be spawned kind of like in front of the portal, which also makes sense because you're kind of like walking through it. So we're going to get the forward vector from the game object that hit the portal and multiply it by some amount to, to actually get like a walking through effect. Let's get the same thing as here. And then instead of position, we're gonna we're gonna get the forward vector, and multiply that times maybe eight. You can play around with this value. It uh, also depends on how big your portal is. Now, then we also want to be able to set that target from the portal gun. So we're gonna use a public function. It's very important that it's public. And then I'm gonna call that set out portal. And here it's basically just setting that portal to whatever comes through here. So we're going to pass that a parameter. I'm going to call that portal. Very generic. See, I, I, I really love this editor. It, it really helps you so much <laughs> with these auto-completion features. God! All right. Anyways, so now it sets that. We don't need the update function. You can remove that. You can also remove the start function. And yeah, now we need to actually call that function from the portal gun controller. Now we're gonna do and set our set out portals. So whenever there's a new portal, we want to assign both of them the new out portal. So let's do that. Let's go and go m current maybe red, and then get component. So let's get the portal controller on those portals. And then now we can call the function that we just did to set the actual out portal. So which is going to be the opposite of this one. Let's copy that and then let's switch that around. And that is pretty much all we need. Now also what you want to do is you want to uh, drag these and make them prefabs. So create a folder or take a folder that way you store your prefabs in, drag them down there. And then you can delete them from this scene. Let's check if we have actually, yeah. So we still need to add a, so let's delete them again because I messed up. So you also want to check that you have the script on both of them. So we have that on here and we have our portal controller script on here as well. So let's drag your portals down here, make them prefabs and you can get, then get rid of them here. And then on your portal gun, you want to assign those to that you just created. So drag that to blue. I want to red. Set your shoot rate to maybe 2.3. All right, and so now if you go back to the scene, you can see that if you, let's say, shoot, whoops, that was the laser. Let's say if you shoot here, you can see the portal is kind of opening up here. Um, so now you need to add the other portal. So let's do the blue one. And if we walk through this now, you can see that I'm now on this side and not on the other side. So that's how you can create a portal. So now you can do all kinds of fun stuff with it, like actually move around pretty far on the map. So make that kind of quick or maybe fall down from somewhere. Oops, that was the wrong, wrong direction. So. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with this now, just like in Portal itself. Um, yeah, I really like this effect. 
And yeah, so that's basically how you can create some dynamic spawning or portal points. And I hope you like this tutorial. If so, please leave me a like. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments down below. If you want to see more tutorials, please consider subscribing. If you have any tutorial requests, can't find the tutorial you are looking for? Well, just ask for it then. Just go to tutorial-request.com and check out if other people are searching for the same tutorial as you do. If you find a matching request, make sure to leave it a like, so other creators always know what's in demand. And if you can't find a request that you are looking for, just create a new one. Simply click on New Request, then choose a Title, Topic and Description for your request and simply click on Make Request and you're done. It's that easy. And with your request, you help creators know what's in demand. So go over to tutorial-request.com and sign up today. It's free.